Okay, so uh, we met Joel yesterday, for those who weren't at X World in 2005. Um, a couple of other interesting things about Joel. Joel is a classically trained journalist and plied his trade as a paparazzi chasing Monica Lewinsky before rising to become the director of photography for United Press. Now, that may seem unrelated, but are there not some similarities between chasing degrade celebrities around on the back of a motorcycle <laughs> with a camera and binding to Active Directory? <laughs> oh, very much so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Both have the potential to crash. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Lovely. Um, so Joel is going to show us all about Nomad. Thank you, Joel. Thank you, Marcus. Um, oop, shouldn't do that again. Uh, Carry the Caribou, just want to let everybody know, if you look at our icon, you see Carrie's head on a shield. Carrie is not mounted on the shield. We have not shot Carrie. It just happens to be her face defending you with a shield. So this is Carrie in full repose, just to let you know that she's still alive and good. Um, as I mentioned before, Orchard and Grove, uh, it's been a lot of fun and exciting stuff. Um, things are different than they were 10 years ago. Probably a nice general statement, I can say. Um, who had a magic triangle set up? Wow, that's pretty cool. Um, uh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> A great thing at the time, and I'm glad it worked. A um, little different now, and I would never recommend that, although on the Slack recently in the last year or two, uh, I, or in that last year or two, last week or two, I've seen some people talking about doing it. And I even ran across somebody who had extended the schema. Um, <laughs> and a chill just went across the room. <laughs> Again, it was a good thing at the time, and I stand behind that, but now things have changed, and so we need to look at directory services in a much different way than we did before. And I, I hope that as we, we go through this, I'll kind of explain that a little bit. Just for nostalgia's sake, uh, this was my slide from WWDC, I think 2005, uh, complete with magic triangle in there. That is, 10.3 was Panther? Right? Yes. Yeah, all right. Uh, yeah, Panther. Uh, so that was Panther server. Uh, we were keeping the MCX on one side. And this was my great, um, we've obviously updated the laptop down the bottom. That was my non-copyright infringing Windows logo there. Uh, up at the top of the, I guess I hit the button twice. So you have the AD plug-in. Uh, you go into LDAP. That's an XServe, right? Uh, some of you may not know that. Uh, if you've joined the Mac admin community in the last couple of years, there was a time when laptops came without screens and were rack mountable. Um, that, that day has gone. Um, and that, that heads on a platter is workgroup manager, uh, which you probably don't remember much either. Um, that was actually pretty cool and had a lot of functionality that kind of went away after a bit. But uh, so this was the Magic Triangle, AD plugin, LDAP, was really cool stuff. Um, but then, you know, we've moved on. So real quick, a uh, couple of AD functions. Because um, about, I was looking down at the timeline with Nomad. Who's using Nomad, first of all? It's cool, good. All right, we'll get the rest of you before the end of the session is over. Uh, or my job hasn't been done correctly. All right. Um, so about six, eight months ago, uh, working at a place in Austin, we did call center work, we did manage Mac services, and we were getting a whole lot of tickets and phone calls and other stuff about my Mac says it's not bind, do I care? <laughs> no, you really don't. Uh, my password doesn't work, I need to change it. Well, what did you do? And back and forth, and tickets and problems and other stuff. She said, we need to change that. So before we could make that better, we had to kind of look at what AD did, right? Why do we care about Active Directory to the Mac? What's the functionality that the Mac is getting out of that? Um, and so you kind of look at a couple of things. You step back even a little bit further and you say, well, what is Active Directory? Well, Active Directory is primarily LDAP and Kerberos. You know, there's a whole lot of other bits and pieces to it and a lot of data that the Mac will never use. But at its heart, it's LDAP for kind of picking up user records and things like that. And then it's Kerberos for authentication. The good thing about that is both LDAP and Kerberos are very available on the Mac. There's lots of open source tools. Uh, Kerberos is uh, Heimdall and MIT Kerberos. LDAP is Open LDAP. So we can interact with it quite a bit and get a lot of things out of it. So that's good stuff. The other thing that a lot of people liked about um, binding to AD was the concept of single sign-on. 
So you would sign in with your Active Directory username and password, and then you'd get a Kerberos ticket. That Kerberos ticket could then be used for a variety of services. The user didn't have to type in their password again. Users were happier. You and IT were happier. Everything was better, right? Things that you could use with single sign-on, uh, websites, file shares, probably not as much now. Uh, certificate provisioning, exchange, DFS, uh, you know, printers. Well, the printers with single sign-on got a little weird. Um, still do, so maybe not. Um, but lots of good stuff. Again, websites, file shares were kind of the biggest ones in most uh, areas. The problem came in, though, is when you kind of extended that to the login window. All right? Before you bound to AD, your user could always log in, whether they're online, offline, whether Apple had recently updated the system or not. After you bound to AD, uh, in particular in the very low version numbers of the OS, uh, it was sometimes a little bit of a uh, question as to whether they'd log in, especially if they were offline. You probably found a lot of things wrong with your Active Directory domain that the Mac kind of brought up to the surface. We used to commonly call it the canary in the coal mine because uh, it would find these little issues with reverse DNS not working or the VPN not actually carrying through some of the stuff. So lots of complexity and other pieces in there. Um, and Many years ago, and even still, and, and I, I very much say that there's still very valid cases for Active Directory binding. Uh, in particular, in lab situations, we have a lot of people logging in on a regular basis, and you may have one of 1,000 students or 500 employees that come up to that machine. And Active Directory bind is very relevant because you need access to all of those users at the same time. However, as certainly in the corporate environment and upper education and other things, um, you probably only have one person on that laptop. That's the only user that will ever be on that laptop. You don't need the other 20,000 people in your domain to even know that laptop exists, let alone be able to log in. Uh, you'll never have anybody else's files on that laptop. Why every time that you look at a directory is it going back up to the LDAP services in AD and looking for UIDs and GIDs to match up with files on your directory? All right. Frankly, most of the things are probably moving into the cloud anyway, where UID and GID matter much less. So now you've got a whole lot of overhead for this Active Directory connection that's getting information that your machine doesn't really need. You're adding complexity to your environment. You're exposing yourself to the fact that when the OS updates or when AD updates or all these other little moving pieces, that the whole stuff might break down and fall apart again. So we looked at this and we said, you know, there's got to be a better way of providing the single sign-on, providing some of the other niceties of Active Directory, but not bringing it all the way up to the login window where it could potentially cause much more of a problem. Right? And so that's what we kind of set out to change with uh, Nomad. Um, again, single user system. You don't need group policy. Uh, there's a couple of solutions that are out there. Uh, AD Passmon, who was using AD Passmon? Yeah, so Nomad came because I was trying to bug Ben to actually write it, not an Apple script. Um, and I don't think he intended this, but he's maybe more clever than I thought. He kept saying, no, no, Swift is too hard. And I said, no, I'll show you. And pretty soon I had an app in Swift. And he said, ha ha, they're all your problem now. <laughs> <laughs> and subsequently stopped updating 80 Passmon. <laughs> So my clever ruse to get him to move from AppleScript to something else did not work at all. Um, and now we have uh, uh, Nomad. So uh, other solutions that are out there, the AD plugin, obviously, AD Passmon, uh, Enterprise Connect, which is an Apple product, a little harder to get outside of the US. Um, Curbminder, which you may have used that just to keep your Kerberos tickets uh, up to date. Share Mounter, Kyle Crashaw, he put that together to kind of auto-mount shares. I wanted to take all the functionality out of all these pieces, put it into one app, and then make it kind of the Swiss army knife for admins. So I think we've got that. Um, and at the risk of, uh, uh, of being socially insensitive, uh, we're coining the term casual binding. And this is the concept that you don't need a full-time bind between your login window, your Mac, and Active Directory. All right. You only have this bind when you need it, which is logging in with your Active Directory username and password, getting some information about the user, doing something with it, and then moving on. Right. So only bind when you need, only bother the user when you need, uh, no persistent directory service connection, and the local account stays a local account. It's not a mobile account. Um, and so when I threw this out there, I had a lot of people that were like, well, that's really cool, but what about the password with the local account staying in sync? 
And so similar to um, uh, some other tools out there, we've put that in. So now the user, we don't care what their username is, could be FluffyBunny82, but their password on that local account is gonna be the same password as their Active Directory account. However, when they log in, it's not doing a live lookup, so that way, ideally, fewer help desk tickets, fewer beach balls, and much, much happier users. All right, so Nomad. The name, No More AD. <laughs> All right, wow. Tough crowd for a Friday at four. I'm like, between you guys in the pub or the airport, oh, or maybe both, I don't know. Um, so everything you like about AD, but without the bind, uh, single sign-on, password expiration warnings, because that was one of the biggest use cases, that users got kind of surprised by the fact that every 90 days their password had to change. So we wanted to put that in. So that now shows up in the menu bar. I'll show you all this in a little bit. Uh, Windows CA certificates, it was one of the harder things. If you're not bound to AD, it's very, very hard to get certificates from AD for your users. Uh, you'll note that the AD certificate payloads that Apple has don't really seem to work in a non-bound environment. It's not really Apple's fault, it's just the way it works. So we've put that functionality into there so your users can get your, certificate, uh, your certificates there. Um, fully manageable via profiles. Uh, we wanted to make sure that anything, and I'm already losing people. You've got a flight, I very much understand. Thank you very much for coming. Um, so you've got... Uh, as an admin, you want to have completely configuration of your system. So the entire app is configurable through configuration profiles. Uh, if you force the things, they then get grayed out on the preferences so the users know that they can't twiddle uh, or do anything else in there. So we want to do that the right way. So that's in there. Um, localized into seven languages now, I think. I was going to do a cute thing where I localized it into Aussie. Uh, and a good day, mate, and Fosters, and yeah, I shouldn't do that, right? Yeah, cut that out of the video. Cut that out of the video. Um, yeah, Fosters is not Australian. I, I know that. Um, v VB. Um, all right, so Nomad process, we follow a very, very simple uh, kind of strategy where we look for SRV records in the DNS. So those are the service records. We look for the ones for LDAP. Uh, we then look for Kerberos tickets. If you have both, we look up the user and AD. We can do some things based upon what we find. We get the groups out of there, cache them locally. So if you've got extension attributes or other things, you can pivot off those groups pretty easily is nice. Uh, compute the password expiration, uh, and then off to the races. Basic operation is very simple, as I said, and um, boom. So service records. Do a knit, then we do an LDAP search. Uh, we started off using a lot of just the open source tools like LDAP search and the Kerberos tools, and we just shell out to them in the app. Uh, we have since gone through a project of CLI to API, and we've started going back and actually using the APIs for all these tools. So now the Kerberos operations are primarily done through the Kerberos APIs. Um, I, I was going to write an LDAP client, but that seemed like a lot of work. Um, especially with Apple not wanting uh, LDAP, open LDAP on there because of the GPL issues. Uh, so I'm, uh, we'll look at that in a little bit. Um, here is uh, the connection checks that we do. Uh, every time Nomad launches, it checks the network, checks for tickets. Every time the network changes, we check for networks, we check for tickets. Every 15 minutes, we check the network, we check for tickets just for good measure. And then every time you use the menu, I thought this was kind of clever because people would be like, well, I don't think it's working. The menu bar hasn't, uh, the, the, the icon hasn't changed. I said, well, did you click on it? Oh, hey, yeah, it worked. Ah, yeah, because we refresh when you click. <laughs> uh, little, little sneaky there. Um, so I'll show you this in a little bit. Uh, the good stuff is pretty much each one of these things, you can have a script get fired off. Uh, who is using Kicker or one of the other uh, kind of launch demons to monitor network changes? Uh, all right, one, wow. Uh, two, okay. So if you want to fire a script every time the user's network connection changes, you can now run that through Nomad, since we already know what's going on. If you want to fire the, a script every time they're on a domain, we know when they're on the domain, so we're happy to do that. So a couple of things like that. This is where we started kind of making the Swiss Army knife out of the app into a really nice admin tool. Um, certificate creation, we can leverage a Windows Web CA. We'll use a user's Kerberos ticket to then generate a certificate for the user, put it into their keychain. 
Um, almost have all the 802.1x stuff worked out so you can automatically join uh, a secure wireless network as well because that's the next kind of step on there. Um, right now, the user will get the certificate. If they go up to the wireless network and click join a secure one, it'll prompt them for, uh, to pick a certificate and that Windows one that they have in their keychain will be valid. So they can get on the wireless network pretty easily. Uh, we're gonna go the next step here in a little bit. Lots of preferences. There's only about six or seven that are in the UI. You can actually see though about 90 of them in our preference list. So if you want the, if, <laughs> and, and we've had a lot of weird ones, if your AD sites really aren't that good and you don't wanna use AD sites, you can tell Nomad which site to use. Uh, by default, we'll actually look them up regularly, like, like you should, but we understand that people in this room are not the people that manage Active Directory, and you may have some, some issues there. So you can override the site detection by putting in that stuff. Um, you can do things like if AD says your password expires in 90 days, but it really doesn't because you're using a third-party tool that manages it differently and doesn't update AD rel, uh, you can override what AD tells us is the password expiration with something else. Um, the, the amount of weird stuff I have found in Active Directory domains would boggle the mind. Uh, but I think we account for most of it. And recently with the 105 version that we just released, a uh, release candidate for, we can actually do straight LDAP. Uh, so if you've got just a normal open LDAP or a Red Hat directory server or eDirectory, good. All right. So if you've got eDirectory or something else, you'll be able to hit that directly over LDAP. So it doesn't have to just be Active Directory. Uh, so there's some fun stuff in there. Coming in the 1.1 version, which I'll show you in a little bit. Uh, well, actually, Keychain is, is in there right now. Uh, so in 1.05 and earlier, actually all the versions, you can save your AD password in the Keychain. And if you do that, we'll automatically log the user in as soon as Nomad launches. They won't even know. They'll just have tickets. When their password changes, we'll fire up a dialog box that says, hey, your password has changed. You need to put in the new one. They put in the new one, they get Kerberos tickets, they're off the races again. All right, we try to be as invasive or as less little invasive as possible uh, going through there. Starting with 1.1, we'll actually do keychain item updates so that when you update your password in AD, which you can do fully through Nomad, it'll also go through and update all your keychain items that you tell it to. So that way we can update your exchange password, we can update your Skype for business password and everything else in that process. Uh, so that's a handy one that a lot of people have been asking for. When we created Nomad, um, we, we, got, we knew we were getting some prime real estate by having an icon in the menu bar. So we also wanted to make sure that we could leverage some cool stuff with that. So if you're a Jamf shop, you probably have the self-service icon down on the bottom. Um, but maybe if you're doing a really good job as an administrator, the user only has to use self-service every so often. So it seems like a lot of screen real estate in the dock for something that might get used once a week, once every other week. So we now have an option that says get software and you can pull down from the menu and it'll launch self-service right from there. Um, so some cool things of that. We also have another functionality which is called get help. Um, this will open up a web URL, it will launch an app, it'll launch a script. Uh, the goal here is to allow your users to interact with IT but in the right way without having to remember a URL uh, since we know what their AD username is, we can also do variable substitution. So if you want a ticket created with their AD username via some sort of web API, that's very, very achievable here because we will do variable substitution in the URLs. Uh, anybody using Bomgar? Bomgar shops? Wow, okay. Uh, so Bomgar is a remote screen sharing app, uh, kind of like TeamViewer or some of the other ones. Great app, but a little bit complicated to get on the client, so we've got a Bomgar integration. Uh, that works out of the box there, which is pretty nice. You don't use BombGuard, don't worry about that. Um, Nomad version 1.1, which I'm gonna show you here. Uh, keychain item updates, uh, big request from a lot of users was arbitrary share mounting. Uh, so you can now feed Nomad 1.1 a list of as many shares as you want. You can give each share up to 30 different mounting options. You can mount it read only, you can mount it hidden from the user, you don't have to mount it in slash volumes, you can mount it someplace else. So pretty much anyone, anything your heart desires with mounting file shares on the system, we should be able to do. Um, you can also only mount it if the user is a member of a particular group. 
since Nomad was aware of Active Directory groups, I know a lot of people have been very excited about this. <laughs> we will then only mount if the group is a, if a user is a member of that group. And you can also tell it to mount only when it's on a network or not on a network, right? Because we know if we can see the domain. And in most cases, if I can't see the domain, I'm not going to be able to mount that file share, so I shouldn't even try. Uh, and then you can also tell it if you want to auto mount that file share or if you just want to allow the user to do it. Uh, we still got a little bit of UI to work out on that, but uh, the main engine is kind of good. You're more than welcome to steal it and put it into anything you want. It's a separate class, because when we wrote it, it's in Swift, I uh, wanted to make sure that it could be pulled out very easily and put into other applications if people just wanted a standalone share mounter app. Um, all right, so real quick, let's, let's, uh, let's do a demo. And uh, mm -hmm. I'll make this guy big. Uh, yep. The 802.1x bit on the previous slide is for 1.1, one, one, I want to automatically create an 802.1x profile for you. Because right now we'll get the certificate, but I won't wire it all up into the 802.1x profile. So then the user still has to manually select Wi-Fi. I want to get through that last bit and, and take care of that. All right, so right here, this is uh, one one that you're looking at. Uh, when you launch it, it comes up, and you get a little icon in the menu bar. By default, it is this little triangle, which is kind of like the generic AD uh, triangle. Uh, you can change that. Uh, just set a preference key for it, and we'll change it into something else. It is only 16 pixels by 16 pixels. It's very hard to get that creative in a 16 by 16 box. Uh, I've seen some people do some really cool stuff, but just be careful with that. So this is a Nomad out of the box. It says not connected. Um, if I go down here and I show you preferences, I've pushed this via configuration profile so that you can see it all here. And when I push it via configuration, uh, the user can't mess with anything. All right, so we gray those out so they know that they're not, uh, they're not there. And, and while we're on this topic, uh, who hates the fact that defaults won't show you forced preferences? All right, so uh, we got another tool because uh, a lot of people were yelling about that. And you can get it off my, uh, well, I was hoping it was right up here. No. A fail in, uh, well, heck. So I got another tool I'll show you at the end that uh, will actually pull and show you what the forced preferences are. Uh, that's up on my GitLab page as well. So if you go to gitlabthefox.com uh, slash MacTroll, you'll see a pref finder up there. And it's a, it's a handy way of kind of showing what preferences are forced and which ones aren't. All right, so we're going to close out of the preferences. I'm going to fire up my VPN. Drum roll, make sure the network's working, looks good, come on. And when I connect, there you see the not connected went away, and now Nomad knows I'm on the domain. If I actually had a username and password in the keychain, it automatically logged me in. I can automatically get certificates as well. Uh, so that's kind of some fun stuff. I'm going to come up here and ignore this debt nag. And I can sign in. Right now, we're going over LDAP. And well, we're first doing Kerberos. We're doing a knit to the uh, Active Directory domain. Then we're going to hit LDAP. This is sometimes a little bit quicker. But the VPN is going all the way back across probably three satellites. Um, and two tin cans. Uh, so when this gets in, uh, you're going to see a green check mark uh, in the icon because we'll have successfully gotten a Kerberos ticket. Um, and then you'll also see how many days the user has left on the password. All right, so very handy stuff that you can use there. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. I should have recorded this, huh? There it goes. Hey, all right. So it's going to pull head from rear here in a little bit. Um, and then this will update, and I can show you some stuff over here. Is it still running? Um, whoops. Let's just, time for a new shell. So here you can see I've got tickets. There it comes up. Um, I got a warning that my password's about to expire because it's in three days. Uh, up at the top corner there, you can see that there's a tiny little 3D and uh, the icon, that lets the user know when their password's about to expire. And I can close, or I can actually change the password directly from here. Uh, if I want to change the password, this comes up. I can do current password, new password. 
that updates it in AD. And if you've told Nomad to cycle it locally as well, it'll update Keychain, File Vault, and the user account password locally, all in one fell swoop. And that way, the local account will be relatively in sync with the network account. A brief note, if uh, you are bound to AD, Nomad works almost identical. So we'll still show you the password countdown. Uh, it is fine-grained password policy aware, because most modern AD domains have that. So if you've got different password policies for different users, Nomad knows all that and will show the right expiration time as it should. Um, other couple of things that you can do in here. If I now go up here, I've got a few more options. Renew tickets. Uh, here's the file servers. This is new for 1.1 and maybe part of what was taking so long. If I pop open the finder, uh, in a little bit under here, you're going to see that other file share uh, that it's loading right now. So this is from a file share uh, that I've set up. You can see we got to clean this up a little bit. Uh, but you can mount these other ones just by clicking on them, and then it'll show you the ones that have already been mounted. Uh, so a handy little way for the users to kind of add and remove uh, file shares there. Um, other stuff, if they've got a home SharePoint and you don't want to auto mount it or something, here's a handy little link for it so they can get it out of there pretty quickly without having to hunt around for where it is. We just pull that out directly out of their AD profile. Uh, this get help, this will launch, uh, in this case, it'll open up a BombGar session. Um, preferences here, sign out. We also put a handy little lock screen on here um, so that users, uh, we argued when we were kind of managing it, does everybody want the lock corner in the upper left-hand corner or the upper right-hand corner? And we couldn't ever decide, so we said, let's put it in the menu item. And that way, we can tell people just to go to one place. If they want to set a hot corner on their own, they, they're more than welcome to. Um, get certificate. This will grab a certificate off the Windows CA. Um, good stuff there. And the other thing that we're very uh, happy with, if you do the defaults command, uh, com.truesource, abs.nomad, um, oh, and I got to do a read. So there's a wealth of information that's in here. So for example, I know the last user that logged in was Andrew Eng. I know that they're a member of the demo users group. This will list all the AD groups that that user is a member of. It's very easy for you to read in from scripts and other things just using the defaults command. You're going to get a array of groups back from that and you know, pivot, parse, do whatever else you want on that. Otherwise, when you're unbound, this is kind of a royal pain in the behind to get. <laughs> because Discal and all the other tools won't have any understanding of what a, a group is. This is the last uh, expiration of the certificate. This user has no certificate, so it's December 30th of a really long time ago. Um, last password expire date. This is the date that this user's password is going to expire. It's three days hence, so uh, July 4th. Um, the last time we gave them a password warning, whether they're signed in or not, uh, some variables you can read and write to, some you should only read from. The signed in one is one you should only read from. All right, just, just putting that out there. Uh, <laughs> but this will let you know if you want to know if a user actually has a valid ticket at the time and has been signed in to Nomad. So that'll show up. Uh, here's the home directory that the user has. Here's the last time they set their password. Here's their principal. Here's their user UPN. Um, all kinds of fun, good stuff that you can grab out of there. Questions, real quick, as I've kind of demoed the the, the bigger parts. All those user pop-up um, uh, little windows are they all con configurable? Could mm -hmm. I have my uni logo and and uh, and the <coughs> password policy hovering above that change password window? Yeah. So on the change password window, I don't have this configured, but it is kind of fun. Uh, if you set a password policy, there'll be a question mark here, and they can click on it, and it'll either take them to a web page or show them a policy. Uh, I can also, if you feed it a policy, red and green dots will show up here. And so if they don't meet the complexity, it won't let them change the password. Um, and then it'll even tell them what they're missing. And we match all the AD complexities, symbols, passwords, that kind of stuff. Awesome. Um, Joe, you mentioned earlier that um, one of the good things about Nomad is that you're not constantly querying AD for mm -hmm. UIDs or network shares. What if you actually want to do that? <laughs> um, 
So I, I'll, I'll step back and I'll cheat and say, well, it's open source code. Uh, so as far as branding and everything else goes, you can have your way with the entire code base. Um, if you wanted to do something a little bit more interesting like that, uh, what I'd probably first suggest is we'll run an action every time a network change occurs. And so you could just fire off a script then. Uh, or I don't know that if we fire anything off on the 15 minute range, but if you file a request on GitLab, that'd be something very easy that we could do. And so we could put in a periodic script um, that, that could go to do those kinds of things. Other questions? I've got more stuff to demo, so don't feel like you've got to fill time. I'm just wondering, like, our users have an impressive ability to break stuff, right? <laughs> um, Keychain especially. Yeah, um, yeah. How does it work with Keychain syncs? Like, is there a means of, of having Nomad doing a running Keychain comparison? Because right now, at least, I've... Uh, so, great question, and the question is, Yes, Joel, you've solved all of our AD problems. We thank you very much. You will never have to buy a beer in Australia again. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> however, there still may be keychain problems that users enter into. And the particular one that you're probably talking about is a user logs into the Mac, and they get presented with this strangely worded three-button window that says something about removing, destroying, and maybe changing. They don't know which one to click on. They randomly pick one. All hell breaks loose. Ticket volume goes up. Uh, currently in 105, that is not addressed. However, uh, I think you mentioned Josh Miller, who did the Mac OS laps. Uh, he's also doing some work for me. No, I shouldn't say that. He's not doing work for me. He kept bothering me to do this, and I kept telling him, why don't you do it first? Um, that didn't work with Ben but uh, maybe it'll work better this time. So Josh is looking at, I have some really old Objective-C code that was called Keychain Minder that worked really well until Google took the name and turned it into something else similar, but I'm, I'm still angry about that. Um, however, uh, maybe close the lens cap on that. I don't want uh, uh, that large of a company upset. Uh, so the next stage is we will have a small window that you can configure absolutely everything from text and everything else and it'll have the three buttons, but you can call them whatever you want. And if you don't want to have those buttons on there because you don't want them to delete the keychain, you don't have to have that button on there. Uh, and when Nomad first launches, it will check and see if the keychain is locked. And if the keychain is locked, it'll throw this window up. So we hope to get that in for 1.1, which should be in about a month. Other questions? Back. Oh, one up in the end from the American. Uh, I have only had the opportunity to play with earlier versions of Nomad in, in an environment with AD. Everything's fixed. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, the hardest part was we really wanted to get the certificates, mm -hmm. and the Windows side didn't seem to know where their CA was. I've heard of that. <laughs> Yeah. So um, is, that, is that common, or is there a way to go out and like just scour the network for this thing? It is like not <laughs> uncommon because I've heard it a number of times and I've helped some people spelunk. Uh, you can actually, buried in AD is typically the URL or the machine that hosts the Windows Web CA. Um, and it has been on the list to put that in, so it automatically would find everything and do the work, uh, but we haven't gotten to that yet. But if you do are of that mindset, um, it should be fairly easy to do some of the uh, open LDAP searches against uh, Active Directory and find that object. Uh, if you go into the Nomad Slack channel, you might have to search back quite a bit, uh, but we did have a conversation around there. And it is something, like I said, I'd like to put in, because it happens a lot. All Thank right, you. so uh, go back to the slides. Um, Nomad's pretty, um, pretty new. We had a public beta in September. Um, we kind of launched December 21st. We had a very quick update. Uh, also on December 21st, as sometimes you do. Um, so that was the second version on the same day. Uh, and then a month later, a month later, a little more than a month later, and then a little more than a month later after that, we're up to 104. And I've got a 105 version that we just put into release candidate uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, so we've, we've been going on a pretty good pace as we have here. And I'm hoping to have 1.1 out probably in about the next couple of weeks. Uh, we've already got betas of that. Um, it's been a little funky. We have 800 people in the Nomad Slack channel. You're all welcome to join. 
um, and I put all the releases out there. Uh, at first, it was just a couple of hardcore people, and so I was putting out nightly releases and, hey, test it out, see what happens. And then we had some new people join that didn't read that part of the Slack that maybe you shouldn't put that into production. Um, so now I'm clearly marking everything as beta uh, and having it through there. Um, it is under MIT license. Uh, all the codes on GitLab uh, feel more than free to take chunks out of it if you want and put it into your own projects. I mean, certainly I've, I've learned from a lot of others that are out there, so I'd appreciate if you learn from me, if you could, and then grab some of that stuff. So I hope to see some good things from that. Uh, we do have support contracts, because uh, a lot of people asked for them. Our first support contract was from Australia. Uh, hey, Australia, yeah! Uh, a gentleman uh, bought a support contract before we even had him. Uh, so uh, that's the living in the future part, I think is what we have. So happy to talk about those. Uh, and I have some sample swag up here. So I got some pins and stickers. So at the end, happy to pass those out as well. So you can put big stickers all over your laptops. Um, what's next? Well, what's next is a bonus demo. Dun, dun, dun. So we've had a lot of conversations around kind of where Active Directory goes and um, what may be. Uh, as an admin, what do you care about and what's coming next? And it was good. This wasn't planned, but earlier on, uh, James talked a little bit. There you go. <laughs> Had some conversation around Okta. So you are now the first public presentation of the work that we have done with Okta. Uh, so instead of having an AD backend, we have an Okta backend. And that is Nomad Pro. As you may have guessed from the name, uh, my son needs to go to college eventually, so this probably won't be open source, um, but we'd love to chat about it. So we can do a sign-in, um, and Okta is a little bit different in that there's not a, like a persistence to it, but you can put in username and password, pick which browser you want to have, because the end result of an Okta sign-in is a session token in a browser, so you can go to all your other apps and do all your other things there. So if I type in my password, which you can save in the keychain if you want, we don't have it right now. I was going to set up QuickTime so you could actually see this. Uh, but uh oh, well, that's not what you're supposed to see. <laughs> Let me try typing my password again. There we go. So I'm using Duo for two-factor authentication. Nomad Pro is perfectly happy with Duo. You can also use Okta Authenticator, the text messages, and everything else with that. So I'm going to send a push. And you're going to see I got a little push right here. So I put my thumb on it. I hit approve. I do my passcode. And this will now get the response. There you go. Logged me in. It's now going to open up a web browser that's going to then have my Okta dashboard. And you can see all my apps that I can go to. Uh, and in this particular case, I can log into my Jamf server. Uh, without having to type in my password again, uh, because it's single sign-on then with Okta. Since we have this UI, we can grab the username and password, and we can synchronize it with the local account, which is what a lot of people are very interested in. Uh, so effectively, a lot of the functionality of Nomad in the back end that you could get with AD, we can now provide to you with Okta. Uh, we're also looking at Ping, uh, One Login, uh, G Suite, and Azure AD. Uh, the last two being a little more complicated. So we're going to have to put on the thinking cap uh, on that for a little bit, because uh, eh, they really don't want us to do what we're doing. But that's fine. Um, we're happy with that. The other thing that we've had a lot of fun with is that the problem with doing some of these things in uh, outside of Safari is that a user could still go straight to Safari and um, authenticate. Well, not, not so much. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to sign out of Okta. And then I'm going to go up here to my uh, preferences. Uh, you see that? It, it already gave it away. What happens is we actually have a Safari extension that uh, redirects the user anytime they try to go to a login when they don't have a token. So this will take any attempts to log in directly through the web page. And we redirect them then to the Nomad UI. So I can capture their password, make sure it's still the same as their local account, and then shove it down locally. Uh, as an admin, you can then do all the things you need to do with that user account, password, other things like that. Because uh, otherwise, when using these SAML SSO kind of uh, sessions, you 
as an admin never know who's on it. You never know what they've done because it's all within that web page and you can't read those cookies. All right, so in this case, uh, the local user may be fluffybunny82, but if I go back to the defaults, defaults read, uh, menu, nomad, nomad pro, did I get that right? There we go. And now I can see exactly who logged in uh, on this device. So it's another handy way that you can also use an extension attribute, other things to kind of harvest what that is, and then create that mapping between the Okta user and what machine they may be on or what their other account is. All right, so some fun stuff in there. Cool? Questions on that? Questions on that? So there's some, uh, I've seen some products out there um, that are trying to really bring like two-factor authentication to the login window and on a Mac and some crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. I guess I my brain right now is going, okay, you could have Okta, you could have this, you know, the could get keychain password in sync between their Okta account. So I think we're getting pretty close potentially to that even as well. Is that something that you've thought about? So I have thought about doing an authentication plugin and there's, there's, I mean, the, the geek in me is really excited about that. Uh, wow, I, you're right there in the heart of it, right? Um, my problem with doing an authentication plugin, and this is somewhat philosophical, but also very practical, um, most cases you're gonna use this with two-factor. I can't guarantee that two-factor is gonna be available at the login window, right? You may be on a plane, you may be outside of cell range, you may be in a lot of other places where two-factor doesn't work. As such, you're now back to the same problem that the AD plugin had. So I don't know that I want to be in that position. What I prefer, you log in with your local account. You're guaranteed to log in every time. There's less complexity. There's less breakage. You then get inside. Nomad Pro automatically launches. You go in. You type in your username and password. You're off to the races. And it's more behoove on the user that they can do this on their own time than straight at the, at the login window. So definitely we're thinking about authentication plugins. I don't know that that's going to be the future. I mean, hey, uh, come to me, ask for custom development, I'll do it. All right, uh, let cross my palm with silver, make no bones about it. Uh, we'll be happy to do that. But I don't know that that's necessarily the exact place that you want to be. Um, hi, um, the ADFS um, mm -hmm. integration. Um, like at the moment, we're running sort of a hybrid, so yep. AD on site with ADFS. Um, but we are moving to single sign-on where we can. Yep. So, yeah, um, like how far away potentially? Um, adding in ADFS is easy. What I don't have figured out yet, because Microsoft really doesn't like me taking the password, and, and I get it, right? And, and it's not a knock against them. It just kind of blows the model. Uh, they want to pop up a web page to have the user log into that web page that then would get them the token. But then you can't synchronize the password down, you can't synchronize the keychain, you can't do all of that other stuff that I have an interest in doing. Uh, so we have some thoughts of being kind of crafty with that. Um, so watch this space. I think we've got what, time for one more question if we have one. I've got one. There we go. Shoot. Um, with the Jam Pro, where you're choosing your browser session, Safari, Chrome, mm -hmm. this is because I'm from Jam, self-service. Yeah, I mean, once you have the token, we'd have to look at self-service, but I don't think that should be a problem. The self-service, I look for the Jamf engineering folks, right? Um, I mean, you're, that's not your product, but uh, <laughs> does self-service use tokens from Safari? Is it just a web view? Does it have its own cookie cache? Yes, no? No, it doesn't. No, all it, right. It's a separate WebKit type thing. Yeah, which is the way you, Apple wants you to do it. I'd definitely look into that because I think that could be very possible uh, since we already have that session to throw the user over there. All right. Okay. Uh oh, I lost my doc. My doc came up over here. I'm not done yet. Don't clap just yet. I got like 30 seconds. All right. Uh, Nomad Helper, watch my thing from Mac DevOps. That's some cool stuff there too. Uh, the other thing that I'll mention, uh, since everybody else has one, I've got a Depp Notify screen as well. It's called Depp Notify. Uh, really great. And if you want to use it for non-Depp things, you're more than welcome to. 
Um, so that's another GitLab repository that you can come up to. Effectively, it's a, log, it's a dialog box that you can change all the logos, all the text, uh, update it. It'll pull from a Jamf log if you want, uh, everything else. So there's that. And um, I'm five seconds over. Wow, OK. Oh, now, now I'm done. All right. Thank you very much. The clock has gone red. It's been a great two days. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. Thank you.